Hello, my name is Donia Ahmadi. In this part of the course, we will discuss urban diversity through a critical lens. In the past decades, we have witnessed increasing diversity in cities all over the world. Diversity derives from many different fa factors, from more conventional demographic indicators like ethnicity, age, gender, and socioeconomic class, to more fluid notions such as behavior, lifestyles, and activities. But what is diversity? Answering this question requires us to firstly determine what elements constitute diversity. Diversity has been defined in different ways. Some definitions focus on what single type of difference diversity refers to. For example, ethnic diversity or cultural diversity. A common critique of such definitions is that they fail to take into account the complexity of diversity and the multiple and dynamic affiliations of an individual. Also, such a definition results in generalizations and stereotyping on the basis of categories such as ethnicity. That is, while two people may belong to the same ethnic or cultural category, many other factors such as their gender or gender identity, their age, their class background factor into who they are, how they are perceived, and how they go about their daily lives. There have been a number of recent theoretical efforts to capture the complexity of diversity, perhaps the most notable of which is a notion of superdiversity developed by Steven Bertovic in 2007. Bertovic introduced superdiversity as a multidimensional perspective on diversity, which goes beyond the ethnic group as the only object of study and acknowledges the interplay of multiple factors that impact people's living conditions. A more recent development is hyperdiversity, introduced by Tassenkoch, Racco, Van Kampen, and Bolt in 2014 as an approach that goes beyond the unidimensional focus on ethnicity and addresses the complexity of diversity. There are two central elements in both approaches. First, both focus at the individual level, and second, diversity within diversity, meaning that people belonging to the same ethnic group may demonstrate different attitudes, orientations, values, and activity patterns, and engage in different daily and lifetime routines. Now, despite their effort to capture the complexity of human identity, superdiversity, hyperdiversity, and their future renditions have a number of shortcomings. First and foremost, they are all very vague. Surely urban diversity is complex, but if everything constitutes diversity, what does really constitute it? Also, from a research perspective, how do you operationalize such a concept? Addressing many different categories within one concept makes it very difficult to research that concept. But more importantly, these theories ultimately tend to flatten difference, meaning they fail to take into account the various positions and hierarchies within and between different categories of difference. Issues of power, position, and politics are therefore often left out of the conversation. The absence of power therefore results in an acritical stance in relation to diversity, which addresses difference only at the level of an individual and leaves out collective experiences of systemic discrimination and inequality. In a nutshell, a one-dimensional understanding of diversity allows for the recognition of one category at a time, while multidimensional diversity frameworks such as superdiversity and hyperdiversity address different categories at once. Both approaches, however, fall short in addressing privilege and oppression since they do not take into account the intersections of different categories. Now, in the next part, I will provide a concrete example of how diversity can be deployed politically by looking at urban policy in Toronto, Canada. The notion of diversity is at the core of the city policy of Toronto, as the motto of the city suggests, diversity our strength. Diversity is generally instrumentalized in image making and promotion of the city as a city that is inclusive and tolerant of difference. Diversity is identified as a, quote, key competitive strength upon, the, upon which the city must build, unquote, in Toronto's immigration and settlement policy framework of the year 2000. And, quote, a source of social, cultural, and economic enrichment and strength and of national or international prestige, unquote, in City of Toronto Multilingual Services Policy of the year 2002. In the City of Toronto's Strategic Actions 2013 till 2018, the promotion and celebration of diversity is a key component of the city vision. It further emphasizes that Toronto's diversity is an economic driver and asset that should be leveraged. 
While recognition of diversity is important, there is a danger in instrumentalizing diversity as an economic asset, since the approach focuses specifically on groups who contribute to the city's economy, creative industries, arts and culture. At the same time, it leaves out groups that are not considered to contribute to economic competitiveness, for instance, the homeless, the racialized poor, and welfare recipients. Therefore, policy discourses as such can create a subtle differentiation between what is perceived as desirable and undesirable diversity, meaning that the types of diversity that cannot be capitalized on for economic gains are rendered undesirable. Diversity as a political tool can therefore serve to depoliticize. In the words of sociologist Himani Benerji, the ideological nature of diversity is evident from, quote, its frequent use and efficacy in the public and official, that is, institutional realms. Serving as a form of moral regulation of happy coexistence, it helps to obscure deeper and structural relations of power, such as racism and sexism and racist heterosexism. And it reduces the problem of social justice into questions of curry and turban. So although the city seemingly capitalizes upon its diversity for self-promotion, Toronto's most diverse neighborhoods located at the edges of the city receive little attention and funds from the city, and there is an increasing concentration of poverty in Toronto's inner suburbs. This concern is very well captured in the following quote provided by a community worker. Quote, when you talk about asset-based approach towards bringing people into the society, is it only asset-based during the years that they're productive, or are you going to get rid of them when they get old and sick? In sum, while recognition of diversity and difference is crucial, diversity as a political tool has the potential for depoliticizing conversations around issues such as poverty and institutionalized racism. In other words, it can euphemize systemic problems. <laughs>